I worked in a cancer center and with prostate cancer patients. I was in the ORs assisting with prostatectomies and just outside the room where my patients were receiving radiation. I know all too well how common prostate cancer is. Hear this, 80% of men by the time they hit 80 years of age will have prostate cancer. The odds are not in our favor, gentlemen. What if I were to tell you that if you follow what I'm about to suggest, you can decrease your risk of getting prostate cancer greatly and live a healthier life? Chris here, registered nurse, certified clinical nurse leader with my focus being research. Stick around to the end for a complete list of risk reduction strategies and watch me shave my beard. Okay, let's get to it. I'm going to start with one activity I think most men will appreciate, making sweet love, or more specifically, the act of ejaculation. Yes, you heard me, ejaculation. But why? A study out of the NIH found that ejaculation frequency, more specifically men who ejaculated more frequently, was correlated with a lower risk of prostate cancer. And another study noted that men who ejaculated 20 times a month or more reduced their risk of prostate cancer by up to 20%. Now that's kind of a lot. The connection is not entirely clear, but researchers suggest that ejaculating clears out the pipes, if you will, and clears your prostate of debris that would otherwise turn into pro-inflammatory substances. When prostatic fluid remains stagnant, it becomes a medium where bacteria can thrive and cause what's called prostatitis, or inflamed prostate. Several other studies looked at ejaculation and prostatitis in young men, and these studies conclusively noted that ejaculation reduced prostatitis occurrence. So we know chronic inflammation can lead to cancer, and ejaculation can reduce inflammation in the form of prostatitis occurrence. So ejaculation appears to be a clear way to reduce risk. If you found what I've said useful so far, please like and subscribe. It helps to trigger the YouTube algorithm and get my information out to more people. This type of information needs to get out there solely based on the fact that you and any male you know will most likely develop prostate cancer at some point in your life. One extremely high risk factor for prostate cancer and cancer in general is obesity. What does being overweight have to do with cancer? Obesity causes chronic inflammation. Excess macronutrients in the adipose tissue stimulate the re release of an inflammatory mediator such as tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-6 and reduce the production of adiponectin, predisposing to a pro-inflammatory state and oxidative stress. Chronic inflammation can cause damage to cell DNA and affect the way cells grow and divide. And that's what cancer is, a cell that is growing rapidly and out of control. So there's your connection with chronic inflammation and cancer. Let's get more granular. A study out of the American Association for Cancer Research found that obesity increased the risk for high-grade prostate cancer, meaning a more aggressive type of prostate cancer. A meta-analysis looked at over 2 million men worldwide and found that obesity correlated with this type of aggressive prostate cancer, which also has a very, very poor prognosis. You may have heard the term metastatic meaning the cancer spreads from the prostate to other parts of the body, like your lymph nodes and bones. Once the cancer has spread, it is no longer curable. Exercise clearly reduces your risk. I hope that exercise is one of those obvious things you need to do, not just obvious, but essential. If you're having issues incorporating exercise into your life for one reason or another, try to change your perspective. And don't think of it like something you want to do, but rather something you have to do, just like you need to drink water and eat food to survive we must remain active. Are there foods that can reduce our risk of prostate cancer? Absolutely. There are several studies that demonstrate higher intake of cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, bok choy, Brussels sprouts, turnips, and arugula lowers the risk of prostate cancer by as much as 40%. A study out of the NIH looked at two compounds contained within cruciferous veg vegetables, sulforaphane and indole-3-carbonyl and saw that these two compounds inhibited prostate cancer in two ways, by blocking of tumor initiation and suppression of transformed cell growth. Tumor suppression happens by inhibiting signaling networks known to have a role in prostate cancer by growth and by triggering cell cycle arrest in apoptosis. Apoptosis is cell death, which is needed when cells become damaged and reproduce out of control, like what I just discussed with happens with cancer cells. Cruciferous veggies have a ton of other benefits too, so be sure to add them to your diet. 
What other foods can reduce risk? Tomatoes. A study out of the NIH suggests a protective effect of tomatoes or tomato phytochemicals. Tomatoes contain an antioxidant compound called lycopene. Lycopene is a plant chemical called a carotenoid. It is what gives the fruit its red color. The actual mechanism of prostate cancer risk reduction is still being studied. Several animal studies have also shown the compound has strong anti-cancer effects. These studies did note that canned or processed tomatoes are more effective than fresh. In addition to tomatoes, watermelons and sweet red peppers also contain lycopene. The last topic which I think carries extreme importance is screening. We can do everything I just suggested, yet, and we can still acquire prostate cancer. And that's okay, because it is a cancer, if detected earlier, is treatable and curable. So what are the recommended guidelines for screening? Your doctor will consider many factors before suggesting when to screen. Generally, screening starts at about age 55, but there are instances you may need one sooner. For example, if you have at least one first-degree relative, such as your father or brother, who has prostate cancer, or at least two extended family members who have had prostate cancer, or are African American, an ethnicity that has a higher risk of developing more aggressive cancers. You may require PSA screening between the ages of 40 and 54. So be sure to get screened when indicated. This topic of prostate cancer risk reduction is relevant for two reasons. Most men will acquire prostate cancer, and we just finished No Shave November or No Mo November one of my favorite times of the year. I get to grow out my facial hair with little to no flack from my better half. I may get a few backhanded comments here and there, and they increase in frequency the hairier I get, but I've got a good cause on my side. It's all about raising cancer awareness and common men's health issues, which include testicular cancer, poor mental health, depression, and physical inactivity. All right, let's get to shape. All right, just woke up with a little tattered, and the wife said at the time, it must go. Should I just keep it like this? Or like this? Or like this? <laughs> Or some Elvis Presley chops. Oh, yeah. Just one giant, amazing mustache. I don't think I can get away with this one. <laughs> Not good. All right, fur free. I'll be donating all my facial hair to um, Facial Hair of Love. Thanks for watching, y'all. I hope you learned something new, and I hope you implement what I suggest so you can lower your risk and be healthier. Like and subscribe. Hit that bell button notification so you can get more information like this. Nurse Chris out.